Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome back to another episode of the Venom Vlog. And today we're gonna have a little bit of fun. We're gonna talk about a single comic book storyline uh, that has some Venom stuff in it. Dev Venom is definitely like a part of it, but it's a new interpretation of Venom. And I just thought it was like very relevant to kind of the events happening in the world today. And that's why I wanted to talk about it. I thought it would just be kind of fun to kind of see the parallels of what's happening now and something we've seen before, you know, um, with like Ferguson and a couple other events that have happened uh, in the Black Lives Matter movement. So this isn't a political episode per se, but this is us talking about a comic book that seems to be inspired by events like that and it mirrors kind of what's happening now so I thought it'd be fun to talk about but before we get into that I also want to mention and say thank you to you guys uh, for being so patient with me for Eddie Brock week so we are going to start that tomorrow morning uh, there are some 90s comics that start Eddie Brock that we never got around to and I always wanted to get back to it and since we don't have a lot of movie news right now and since uh, the next episode of Maximum Venom isn't till next weekend and uh, and then I also have some interviews going up for that you know show actually more uh, Maximum Venom episodes uh, or interviews Interviews. Uh, that'll be going up next week as well. So I had this week where I'm like, oh, I have nothing to post. Like I have no, there's no movie news. There's no Max and Venom stuff, you know, so what do we do? And I said, well, let's do Eddie Brock week. So I, I appreciate you guys being patient and waiting for it. I was going to start it last week, but with all these events going on, I felt we could push it back to now. And here we are. So tomorrow, starting then, uh, we are going to talk, talk about Tooth and Claw, and then after that, Venom on Trial. And every day for the rest of the week, I think going all the way to either Saturday or Sunday, you're going to get a Eddie Brock, uh, you know, comic book discussion video. So I hope you guys enjoy those. And like I said, next week we'll get into more Maximum Venom stuff, and then after that, we'll try to figure something else out for the month of July. I think I might do uh, why I'm launching the new Parasite podcast, and you'll probably see that starting next week as well. And that'll go into July and, and August as well. So I already recorded, I think, 11 episodes of that. So I'm trying to get a bunch of them in the can for you guys. And then we're going to start pumping them out pretty quickly. So uh, yeah, it's going to be fun. So today, what we're going to talk about is a uh, in Spider-Verse, there was a story called the anarchic uh, or anarchic Spider-Man, and uh, and so it's basically a, t a different take on Spider-Man, where we go to Earth 138, and in this world we have Hobie Brown, who's one of my favorite Spider-Man side characters. Um, I've always been a big fan of the Prowler. I love you know that character in general. I like all the times where you know he was a villain, then when he was a hero and try to help Spider-Man, and uh, he's been great. He's a really cool character. I don't really like that they killed him, like Dan Slott killed him in Clone Conspiracy, and then made a clone of him immediately. I didn't really like that. I, I felt like that was kind of weak. Uh, but, uh, you know, but the Prowler role has kind of moved on to Miles Morales' uh, uncle, who's kind of take over that role because it was popular in the Ultimate Comics. And then because of the Spider-Verse movie, you know, Into the Spider-Verse, uh, that, you know, he's, he's kind of become the first on-screen interpretation of Prowler in a movie format, right? Uh, obviously, we've seen Prowler before in some of the cartoons um, and then video games as well, too. But, uh, but seeing him on the big screen... That was our first time, and it was Miles' father, our uncle. I'm sorry, Miles' uncle. And uh, and so, yeah, we, you know, we've had different versions of the Prowler, but the original one was Hobie Brown, and I'm a big fan of that character. So when uh, Jed McKay, who is the writer of this story, and Sheldon Vela, who is the artist, when they came together and they decided to make an Earth-138 Spider-Man, who is called Punk Rock Spider-Man, uh, and uh, he has, uh, you know, it's Hobie Brown under the costume, and I thought that was really awesome. So this little short story, it, it, there's not much here, it's just visuals pretty much and it kind of represents and mirrors a lot of uh, things that happen when it's protesters and then police and this goes all the way back to you know the 70s and even before like anytime there was a protest there's people standing off against the police uh, but when you see this image of like people wearing bandanas around their face uh, and then you cut over to the police and they're all sitting there with their SWAT gear it's really eerie like how how dead on this is and obviously like I said it is inspired by you know events that have happened in the past like you know five ten years as well uh, but also it very much mirrors what we're seeing on the news right now and so I was like we got to talk about this at least to some degree I mean, there's not, like I said, a lot of depth to dig into here. You don't get a ton of story. Mainly, you're just kind of following Hope, uh, Hobart Brown, a.k.a. Hobie Brown, and he is the punk rock Spider-Man. He's standing still while there's, like, someone who's, like, dressed as a Captain America type, but they have, like, an almost like an Anarchy A on their hat instead of, like, an America A, and it's just a bunch of people, you know, just wearing bandanas and holding weapons, and they're getting ready for the fight of their life, and across from them is Norman Osborn, President Osborn in this world, and President Osborn has created a, a new system uh, called the Variable Engagement Neurosensitive Organic Mesh, which is an, you know, basically spells out venom. And so all these cops who are standing there with their shields, all of a sudden, boom, these symbiote-like things come over them, and they turn into what I like to call Venom PD. <laughs> so it's like the Venom Police Department. So the you know Venom 
and everything is wrapped around the cops who are kind of the bad guys in this scenario or the ones that the you know the the people who are rising up are standing against you know so it's pretty neat seeing these two images and having this uh, you know them across from each other is awesome the artwork by sheldon is amazing and you have the two teams, you know, going at each other. All the Venoms now, the Venom police are running at uh, the, you know, the rioters or protesters or, or uh, anarchists or whatever they are, whatever they're representing. I think they mentioned that, um, you know, the city is just keeps pushing people down. And underneath President Osborne, he's kind of a cruel leader, cruel president. Um, I think he even says the line like "Make America Great Again." So clearly, Judd McKay had some, uh, you know, political things he was saying in this one for sure. Um, uh, so, you know, pushing that aside, because obviously we don't get into that stuff here uh, on Venom Vlog, but it was still, it's still neat, you know, because every, and I know people are going to complain, people on one side or the other might complain about things like this, but for me, comics on some level always mirror the world around them, and whether you agree with that mirror or not, that's just how people see the world, and that's how Jed, you know, sees things going on, and that's how Sheldon wanted to represent it, and so they came together and made this story. So that's the story we get, and I thought it was pretty neat. The visuals are amazing. I love Sheldon's artwork, and uh, and so you know, you have these two warring factions essentially, these people who are tired of being put down and and pushed down, and and and, and you know, and kept uh, oppressed, and then you have the people like Norman Osborn, who's the president and who you know is definitely abusing his power and he's created this you know venom you know thing for the police and the two go at each other and uh, and there's a you know right as they're about to fight or connect that's when hobie brown you know because like you have the captain america person like leading the charge but then right at the end they're like now and then hobie brown pulls out his guitar you re reveal that all the things that they're standing on like all the people with the bandanas on their face they're all standing on these like school buses and other things turns out it was all a facade all the these things lift up and reveal that it's a bunch of amps so i guess you know they figured out that this new tech that the cops use are vulnerable to sound which is very much similar to the venom symbiote and as the cops are nearing the venom pd as they're descending on uh, the you know the other people uh, who are standing up for themselves you have uh, the sound blast just coming at them and just start ripping the symbiote mesh away, whatever it's called, you know? And so all of the cops are like starting to crawl, trying to, you know, to, to stand up and, and fight back, but they lose. And then you have Norman Osborn, you know, at the head of the pack is like, it's going to take more than three notes because, you know, uh, punk rock Spider-Man's like, why are you just like wailing on the guitar? And, uh, and as, you know, Norman's reaching up for him, he pulls out a gun. He's like, I'm going to kill you, kid. And then, uh, you know, punk rock Spider-Man's like, all right, the sound's not working. So he pulls out the guitar and smashes it right on top of Norman. Norman's head knocking him out uh, and then at the end of that uh, you see that there's someone watching punk rock spider-man do all this and of course that's another spider-man from another dimension who is going around recruiting people for you know for the the big battle that takes place in spider-verse so this is how hobart brown gets recruited into that big battle and uh, and i like it because they're like oh yeah he's anarchistic uh you know he's uh he you know he fights back he talks back he doesn't like authority yeah, we need someone like him on our side. I think it's like Superior Spider-Man is like, yeah, I want someone who has a little bit of edge. And so let's recruit this guy. Uh, and so, yeah, that's pretty much the story. I mean, that's it. It's just like a little eight page story of uh, of these two you know sides going at it. But it just had some great imagery. And when you see it, it kind of mirrors a lot of things that we're seeing in the world today. And I know Venom is kind of portrayed as like the police in this one. And some, you know, will view that as a as a bad thing. Uh, obviously, we're seeing the story through Hobart Brown's eyes, and he's coming from the side of the underdogs, the people who feel like they're being put down, and they're just tired of, you know, feeling like that, basically. And you can understand that, right? You can absolutely understand that. So when I saw this book, I was like, we got to at least talk about it a little bit, show off some of the artwork, because it's great. I thought this was a really cool little story. Uh, I like Punk Rock Spider-Man. The main reason I like him is because he's Hobie Brown. Like, that's what I love. I'm like, yes, Hobie Brown. He's one of my favorite characters. So to see him as a Spider-Man uh, is pretty cool. And to see him like you know, playing punk rock music and stuff, it's like, I definitely went through that phase when I was younger of, of punk rock music. So uh, so it's neat, you know, with like no effects and stuff. So I'm like, all right, cool. Like, great. You're, you're doing awesome. So uh, so yeah, this is a fun story. Don't know if you guys read it. I think it's in a Spider-Verse book, like number two. Um, I'll put the cover up here so you can kind of see which issue that's from. And it was like a little backup story in there. And I think if you buy the Spider-Verse comicsology, like Omnibus, like I did, with, that comes with every issue of Spider-Verse and all the tie-ins, it's located in that. That's how I had, you know, found it and stuff. Um, but yeah, when I saw this, and I think I saw someone post this on Instagram the other day, uh, or Twitter, like an image from it, 
And I was like, wow, I totally forgot about that book. And it was on my list of things to cover. And I said, well, what better time to cover it than now? So yeah, check it out if you haven't read it yourself. Um, and let me know your thoughts on it down below. I'd love to hear what your guys' perspectives on this is. Do you like Venom being on, you know, on the police, you know, kind of being portrayed as the villains? Uh, obviously, that's kind of true to the original Venom was like an, a villain as well. Um, I just read a comic yesterday, and we're going to talk about it uh, coming up here in uh, Eddie Brock week, where Eddie is like, you know, calling out the police for being, you know, dirty and stuff like that. And I was like, oh, wow. So yeah, Eddie seemed very anti-police uh, in the, uh, you know, in the main universe in these miniseries that Larry Hama wrote. Uh, but then here, I, you know, I read this and I'm like, oh, wow, he is the police in this one. So I was like, oh, that's kind of a weird, uh, you know, uh, juxtaposition there, or like, you know, difference uh, that I liked. So uh, yeah, let me know your thoughts down below. And as always, we'll continue our conversation down there. Thanks for watching the show. As always, like, share, subscribe, all that fun stuff. Eddie Brock Week starts tomorrow morning. I can't wait. We'll see you guys then. Peace.